Support for NPR comes from NPR member stations and from Frederica and Howard Stevenson supporting Olin College, which is working to help the next generation of engineers develop the entrepreneurial skills, experience, and mindset to bring technological innovations to market. Learn more at olin.edu. From the estate of Joan B. Kroc, whose bequest serves as an enduring investment in the future of public radio and seeks to help NPR produce programming that meets the highest standards of public service in journalism and cultural expression. And from Jane and Gerald Catcher, supporting the children's movement of Florida, dedicated to helping all children enter school with the social, emotional, and intellectual skills needed to succeed. More information is available at childrensmovementflorida.org. This is Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm Renee Montaigne. And I'm Steve Inskeep. Judges, baseball umpires, and loan officers constantly have to make judgments. Does the person performing qualify for asylum? Is the pitch a ball or a strike? Should I approve this loan application? Since all these people are human, they make mistakes, and our social science correspondent, Chandra Vedantam, has come across a mistake that all make, and some research about that. Hi, Shankar. Hi, Steve. And the mistake is what? Well, the mistake lies in seeing patterns where none exist. It's actually a common error, Steve. We often want to impose a sense of order on things that are actually random. We see this in casinos all the time. In fact, the phenomenon is called the gambler's fallacy. If you toss a coin up five times and it comes down tails five times in a row, you have a feeling that the next coin flip has to come down heads. It must be heads this time. Put all my money on heads. Exactly. Sure. Now, in reality, of course, there's a 50 50 chance the next coin flip is going to be heads. Each coin flip is completely independent, and strings of heads or strings of tails are not surprising, but we're often surprised when they do. Apply. Okay, so how does that apply to this situation where people are judging balls and strikes or judging human beings in a courtroom? Well, many analyses of the gambler's fallacy have typically been lab experiments. Kelly Shu at the University of Chicago, along with her colleagues Daniel Chen and Toby Moskowitz, they analyzed 150,000 rulings by judges in immigration courts. So these were judges hearing asylum cases. Mm. The researchers analyzed how often does an asylum approval follow a rejection or vice versa. Now, each case, obviously, has no bearing on the next case, so how judges rule on one case should not affect how they rule on the next case. Here's Kelly Shu. What we find is that judges tend to deny asylum if they granted asylum to the previous case uh, and the opposite. So they tend to grant asylum if they just denied asylum to the previous case. Whoa, so it's like that person with uh, the coin flipping it heads or tails. They're thinking on some level, sometimes, if I just had tails, the next one maybe ought to come up heads. That's right. Now, actually, if you ask the judges, they will probably tell you that each case has no bearing on the next. 